Hello, it's Kate from the Litter Apothecary and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here to talk about Next Year in Havana by Chanel Clayton. And before I get into this book review, I want to explain something for a second that some of you might be wondering about. So the way that I determine how I, when I listen to most of my audiobooks, unless it's an immersion read or I really want to read a book or I'm reading with John or something, I, when I need a new audiobook, I go sort my list of audible audio, audiobooks to not started, um, the unread ones, and I go all the way down to the bottom of the list. So essentially the ones that I've had in my library the longest, and I just start with the one that's on the bottom. And that's how I get this random order of audiobook, and that's how I got next year in Havana up on my TBR. I don't even really remember what attracted me to this one. Maybe just, maybe it was the cover. Maybe it was during one of my historical fiction phases. Maybe it's a combination of a lot of different things, but it was on my Audible library. So I went for it. This is book one in the Perez family series. And I liked it, but I didn't love it. I gave it four out of five stars. I thought it was a solid book, but I thought it could have been a little bit better. So a spoiler-free summary of this book. After the death of her grandmother, a Cuban-American woman travels to Havana where she discovers the roots of her identity and unearths a family secret hidden since the Cuban Revolution. Our main character travels to Cuba after her grandmother dies because her grandmother's dying wish is to be essentially her ashes to be spread in Cuba where she grew up. And so with our main character traveling back to Cuba, this sets up the dual timeline that we had throughout the book. We've got 1958 and Havana, Cuba. And this is basically from the point of view of our main character's grandmother and during the time of the Cuban revolution. And then the other timeline that we have throughout this book is 2017. It starts in Miami with our main character and then she goes to Cuba. So it goes into Havana. And this is when our main character learns of her family and by extension, her own story secrets and the true meaning of courage. Like I said, I gave this one four out of five stars. I thought our characters felt genuine and real, like they could be real people. The atmosphere and setting, what little I know of Cuba and the revolution and the time of the Cuban Missile Crisis and the changing of regimes and all of that, it felt like the Cuba that I've learned of. I don't know a whole lot about Cuba, so take this one with a grain of salt, but it felt like what Cuba should feel like. And part of that is because our author pulled in Cuban history, Cuban culture, Cuban traditions, and she was raised Cuban in America, so she got to essentially pour her family history into this book. Her writing style was easy to follow. I listened to this solely on audiobook, and I never once felt like what's going really confused. So I thought it was an easy to follow writing style. Her intrigue, I was a little disappointed with the intrigue because we would get presented with an intriguing moment, a puzzle to solve, but then almost immediately it was solved or the problem was solved. We got the solution. It moved on really quickly and I wanted to linger a little bit longer to maintain that intrigue. It didn't quite feel like intrigue to me. Logic and relationships. Logic was there, totally. Relationships, I was looking for a little bit more in our relationships. They felt like they were just the beginning, and maybe that's because it's book one in a series, but I was just looking for a little bit more in these in the relationships in this book. As you can tell, I really enjoyed it. Gave it four to five stars, which is a good rating for me. It means I liked it, but I didn't love it. And our audiobook narrators, we had two, which I didn't write down because I was not that prepared, but they will in, be in the graphic here. I thought they did a great job. We had one male and one female narrator to balance out the different character voices. And I thought they did a really good job. They brought Cuba to this book and it thought they read at a good pace and it was just really good narrating. 
So, as I said, I gave Next Year in Havana 4 out of 5 stars. I really enjoyed it, and maybe someday when my TBR lightens up a little bit, if it ever lightens up, I'll continue with the Prez Family series. If you've read Next Year in Havana, let me know in the comments below. What did you think of it? Did you love it? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Did you eh, feel meh about it? What was your favorite part of it? My favorite part, I think, was the Cuban culture and being able to see Cuba at these different times in history and through different points of view and just experiencing that culture in a different way. As always, keep reading and I love you all to the moon and back. Bye.